Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. We'll be right back to the show. But before we do, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Factor Mills. Dot com, where if you go to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50, you can get 50% off your first order. That's factormills.com slash unbroken50. If you're like me and you are a person who is busy trying to create a life, heal, work on their health, wealth, and relationships, and not to mention deal with the day-to-days of normal life, you do not have time to be going to the grocery store and trying to figure out what you're going to cook every single day of the week. In fact, one time I did the math and I realized I was spending over 15 hours a week at the grocery store and cooking. When I added factor, I got to use that time for myself, for my family, for my friends, for my community, and for my business. And so if you're in the place where you need some more support in the kitchen, head to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50 to get 50% off. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Welcome to the Think Unbroken podcast. I'm your host, Michael Unbroken, and this podcast is about helping trauma survivors let go of the past, overcome their fear, discover their identity, become the hero of their own story, and ultimately to be unbroken. Our goal in company is to bring on guests and experts in the fields of mental, physical, and psychological health to help you overcome the past, to take back your power. And in this podcast, we are unedited and unfiltered, and we're going to give it to you real so that you can start to create massive change in your life. If you're curious about learning more outside the podcast, you can get a free copy of my book, Think Unbroken, at book dot think unbroken.com that's book dot think unbroken.com where you can get a copy of my number one best-selling book think unbroken understanding and overcoming childhood trauma the most important thing that you can ever do my friends is show up for yourself and that's where you are today and i appreciate you i have massive gratitude for you and without further ado let's get into the show Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Hope that you're doing well wherever you are in the world today. Super excited to be back with you with another episode. I was recently in Tony Robbins' personal power course, 
And he was talking about this idea of neuro associations and how our associations with stimulus determine our behavior and how the stronger our neural association is, the more likely we are either going to do something that makes us feel good because we're doing it out of pleasure or we will avoid things that could possibly be good for us because we are avoiding them out of pain. And I was thinking about this for a long time because I can reflect on so many experiences of not only my life, but many of the clients that I've worked with and how at the beginning, typically, and generally speaking, probably more often than not, when I see and I experience that in me and my clients of being at a roadblock, there is this reality that you have to come to understand in that you are simply having a neuro response to stimulus. Now, what does this really mean? So many people operate in their life either only to avoid pain or only to have pleasure. And that's a very dangerous place to operate because when you're moving through the world, only moving in an aspect of heading towards pleasure, then you avoid painful experiences. Why? Because it's so much easier to be in a place of pleasure than it is to be in a place of pain. And people get stuck. Like, what does stuckness really mean? And I think about this a lot. Stuckness is that link that we have, or even the separation or the breakdown of the link that we have between the thing that we need to do and the outcome. You see, because often we tie the outcome first to determine whether or not we are going to move forward with something that may actually make our life different. And this could be an association that we place around pain. And we look at these hard things that we have to do in our life and we find justification in not doing them. Now, many of those things, they're programmed and they're conditioned into us from the youngest age, right? I remember one of the reasons that I did not work out as a child is because I, and even as a teen until I started getting really deep into sports, was I associated working out with pain because when I moved my body, there was a likelihood that I was going to have an asthma attack because I had asthma as a child. And I listened to my mother and the doctors and people around me say, don't run, don't play, don't have fun. You have asthma every single time you try to do anything, you're probably going to die. And because of that, I found myself being an inactive child, right? When I was eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old, while all the other kids, if we were in recess or gym or whatever, were playing, I wouldn't play because I was in so much fear of the potential of pain that I couldn't bring myself to do it. It was very miserable because all I had heard in the back of my head was if you are active, you are going to have an asthma attack and die. Now, is that true? Yes, to an extent, right? But think about this. I had an inhaler with me. I had teachers who were there. I had the ability to listen to my body, and yet I didn't move. And what was really fascinating, and many people say you may grow out of asthma. Sure. I don't know whether that's true or not. I'm not a doctor. But one day, I just started saying, I don't care what's going to happen. I'm going to do this anyway. And when I did that and I changed my association that I had with physical movement to pleasure, it really changed my life because by the time that I was like 11 years old, I joined the wrestling team. I was on the baseball team. I was on the football team. And I think honestly, between 10 or 11 years old and even to today, I have not stopped being active. Well, minus that stint in my 20s, which I know many of you know about. Um, I have not stopped being active as a whole, and I think I've had an asthma attack twice. Now, look, I get that. That's a physical thing, and that is an autoimmune disease, and that is something that can be very dangerous. But what if you applied those same ideas, ideations, and mentalities to other things? Let me give you an example. Recently, I got completely out of debt. And the reason that I'm sharing this with you is because it's very, very important. My association with money for the longest time was that everyone is in debt, so you have to be in debt, whether business debt or personal debt, whatever, regardless, if 
you are not in debt, then you're not living life to your fullest. And so you have to borrow money to be able to feel fulfilled. You have to always struggle. Now, a lot of this came from the conditioning that I had as a child, right? Growing up homeless, growing up in poverty, never having money, being fearful of money, looking at my life in this aspect of money is the worst thing ever. I don't deserve to have it. If I have it, I can't keep it. If I keep it, I'll blow it. And it's going to be something that's ultimately in my way. Excess money, having access to money, having money to feel safe is too scary. I don't deserve it. And what happened was a couple of years ago, I started changing the way that I associated my emotional state with money. I got excited about it. I said, yes, I can have money. Yes, I deserve to be out of debt. Yes, I can be successful and save and build and ultimately on a long enough timeline, which I'm nowhere near, but build wealth for myself and for my family and for the generations of my name that come on the backside of this. But it took the state change. It took me getting in this very excited place about it, being hyped up about it, being excited about it for me to change the neurological conditioning that I had associated to it. Because all I ever said was, I'm not good enough, so I'm going to live in fear, so I will do things to sabotage myself when it comes to finances. Some of you are having that same experience. But what if you didn't? What if you simply looked at your life and said, I am excited about the prospect that I can have financial freedom. I am excited about the prospect that I will not be in debt that I don't any, owe anyone a penny, that I am living freely of my own accord, right? Now there's like sacrifices, right? Because it would be amazing if self-care and building confidence was as simple as just telling yourself you love yourself, but it's not. We'll be right back, but I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about the Think Unbroken six-week trauma healing coaching program. If you go to coaching.thinkunbroken.com, that's coaching.thinkunbroken.com, you can sign up for the six-week daily Think Unbroken Trauma Healing Coaching Program. In this program, we're going to go over the six principles of healing trauma, adaptation, understanding the impacts of trauma, how to become the hero of your own story, what to do next, and ultimately what it means to be unbroken. For more information about this six-week coaching program, which you can download as an app on your phone and take with you everywhere, no matter where you are in the world, it's interactive. It's built about giving you practical tools that you can use in real time. And if you're ready for what's next in your life, go to coaching.thinkunbroken.com. Again, that's coaching.thinkunbroken.com. Now let's get back to the show. And I wish it was, I truly do wish it was, but it's not. The only way you're going to build confidence, the only way you're going to change these neurological associations is by doing difficult things that put you in a position to make them come to fruition, right? So what do you have to do if you're like where I was and you were deep in debt? Well, the thing that you have to do is make sure that you're not spending money on things that don't matter, that don't move you towards your goal. You have to make sure that, you know, if you want to go out to dinner with friends, sometimes you got to order the salad, right? Sometimes you don't go to the bar or get the coffee. You know, it's the little things that matter because you start to build confidence when you see things around you change. This applies to everything, right? Think about it from a relationship perspective. If your narrative is, I don't deserve to have a relationship because I was abused as a child and nobody loves me and pain is the only way that I have valid validation in the world, that is how you're going to operate because you are in that place. You have made a decision that it is more painful to change your mind about what is possible than to be in your comfort zone of what is known. So think about this for a second. If your association with love is being screamed at, that is what you will seek in a relationship. If your parents screamed at you as a child and you associated that with love, admiration, and affection, well, then guess what? That's what you're going to seek in a relationship. And that's not ideal, and you know that. So how do you change that? 
You have to first understand that you're having that biological experience. You're anchored to that feeling. You're stuck in that emotion because you've been conditioned into it. And when you focus consistently on changing that, your life will change. And so how do you do that? First and foremost, it's about behaviors. It's about the patterns that you put yourself into. If you are in your fifth relationship in a row where you're with someone who's yelling at you, you might need to actually take a look in the mirror and recognize that the common denominator is you. And I've been there. I've been in toxic relationships. I've been in relationships where we yelled at each other, where we screamed at each other, where we belittled each other. I've been in healthy relationships also where there was love and care and compassion because I changed my neurological association. I got excited. Guys, you have to get excited. You have to feel worthy of the reality that you can have that relationship of love, of happiness, of joy, of success, of pleasure. But the thing that you have to do is be willing to give up the old reality that the only way you can have love is through pain, right? Do you see where I'm going with these examples? These are three very different examples that are all tied to you understanding that you're having a biological experience. And so I want to challenge you here right now, if you're listening to this and you're in this place in your life where you feel stuck about the decisions that you have to make because you're scared or because you're so tied into the pleasure that you haven't made the decisions because you're too comfortable. And even though you know you need to get uncomfortable so your life can become different or better, you don't move forward. You have to change your association. You have to change your state in the way that you are thinking about what is possible. And that starts with thinking about what excites you, what gets you fired up, where are you at your best, where do you feel unstoppable, and then adding in the thing that you're scared of and changing the association. Because if your fear is, I can't be physical because of pain, what if you changed it to, I can be physical because it brings me pleasure, because it makes me stronger, which helps me operate better in the day, which makes me a better father, mother, brother, sister, human being, and person. What if it was, I can have money, I deserve to have money in my life, because when I have money, I can give to the charities, I can give to my church, I can give to the community, I can take care of myself if I get sick, I can buy the things that I want and give to others when they are in need. What if you changed your association with relationships and worth and you said, I deserve to have a relationship of love and compassion and happiness. I'm fired up about that. I want it. I need it. I desire it. It's right here for you. You know, these limiting beliefs about what you deserve to have, they can change like that. It happens so quickly, but you have to get in a place of excitement. You have to be fired up about it. You have to be ready for it. If you're glum about it, if you're ho-ha about it, if you're nonchalant about it, nothing in your life will change. But if you change the associations, even this, I'll give you one more. You're in this position in life where you're like, I want to lose weight, but you associate eating chocolate with pleasure. And I know this is far-fetched, so bear with me. But you associate the foods, let's call it food instead of chocolate. You associate the foods that you eat with pleasure and you know those foods are bad for you. The fried chicken, the macaroni and cheese, the chicken fried steak, all the things that you know are poisoning your body. You associate pleasure with those things because they taste good for a moment. And you're always like, I can never get off this diet. I'm always trying to lose weight, but it never comes off because I'm not moving my body and I'm always eating the same old foods. Okay, but what if you change your association with those foods to pain? Because again, think about this. As humans, we only operate either in pain or in pleasure. And if you change the association that you have to pain, i.e., and even pleasure. So I'll give you both because there's two ways to do this. One, the food that I eat makes me feel sick. And because it makes me feel sick, I can't operate, I can't show up in the world, I can't take care of myself, my community, my family, my children, my business. Thus, I will not eat those foods, right? 
that's that's operating through a scope of pain because again we operate through pain or pleasure so if you associate pain with eating foods that you know are taking away from your ability to be a successful person you will stop but you can also do it through pleasure this is what i tend to aim towards i go all right the chicken the macaroni and cheese the chicken fried steak I don't eat those because I feel so fucking good when I don't. I can operate in a scope of showing up for my community, myself, my friends, my family. My body feels good. My cognition feels good. I sleep better. I operate better. I think better. I'm more coherent. I'm able to write. I'm able to read. I'm able to meditate better. I feel inside of my body. I'm not being avoidant. Wow. See the difference there? You have the ability to make meaning of every situation and every circumstance of your life. But you have to be willing to look at it through understanding that the neuro associations that you are making in your life on a day-to-day basis are determining your behavior. So whether you apply pain or pleasure to what is happening in your life, that is what is determining your action. So my friends, I hope this was an incredible episode for you. I know when I learned this a few years ago, it changed my life forever. And I'm super happy I get to share it with you. That said, thank you so much for listening. Please always, as always, like, subscribe, comment, share, tell a friend. And until next time, my friends, be unbroken. I'll see ya. Unbroken Nation, hope that you just got a tremendous amount of value from today's episode. I want to know what you think. Please do me a favor and review, rate, and share the episode with three friends on social media today. It would mean the world if you did, because ultimately at the end of the day, creating community and connection is how we heal generational trauma in the world. And I need your help to do that on Broken Nation. So if you're on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you are, please like, comment, share, review. I want to know not only what you like about the show, but how I can make the show better, how I can make this further about helping you on your healing journey. So do me a favor. And when you do shoot me a screenshot of you making the review to my DM at Michael Unbroken on Instagram so that I can have a conversation with you, say hi, and more importantly, so I can share it with the Unbroken Nation. Thank you so much, my friend. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program.